Ryan Elliott for ID Boxing with me and on to David Diamante. David, I bump into you in my hometown of Newcastle. Now we're here in San Antonio. What a life. Yeah, it's great, man. It's great. Uh, San Antonio, Texas, the Alamo City. Um, it's your first time in Texas, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, this is quite a state. Um, it's a big, big place, Texas. But San Antonio is a cool town and we got Bam Rodriguez in action this weekend. So kind of an exciting card. Yeah, let's start with Bam then. Um, he's building something quite special here in San Antonio. Could be a two-division world champion at 23 years old. How high is this kid's ceiling? I mean, he's, he's a pretty unbelievable talent. Uh, when it's all said and done, I think he could be a champion in several different divisions, not just two. But uh, like you said, he's, he's aiming to become the youngest active uh, two-division world champion and the first ever from San Antonio. So uh, it's going to be a, a, an interesting fight. Um, and uh, there's, I've been hearing a lot of stuff on social between him and Sonny Edwards, so that's a potential fight to come, which I think is a really exciting fight. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of exciting things happening at 112, 115, just in this whole kind of vicinity. And I think Bam's right at the center of it. And... You know, the fact that he takes all comers and he's done it on short notice, he does, you know, he's just not afraid. He, he, he believes in his skills and uh, it's, it's going to be uh, fun to see what happens in the future with him. It's been a bit of a different BAM this week. I know after his last fight, he maybe had critics for the first time in his career and he said at the press conference, I've got a chip on my shoulder in this training camp. With that in mind, do you think we're going to see that spectacular performance tonight? You never know. You can't speculate, but I, I think so. But I think he's going to probably, I think, you know, Bam is an interesting cat because he comes from a fighting family, right? And his brother and and he just seems very grounded. And as, for as young as he is um, and physically the, the small stature, he carries himself in such this this way that like he almost has like an old boxing soul. And so I think that we're not going to see Bam overreach. You know, they say in boxing, you reach, they teach. You know, if you overreach, you get you get caught. And and Bam's not that type of guy. He's a smart fighter. He seems to have a lot of boxing wisdom. He seems like he's got an old soul for, you know, for for being such a young guy in the boxing world. And I think that he's going to do what it takes uh, to get the job done. And if that is to be spectacular, then maybe we'll see that. But if he needs to box or whatever he needs to do, I think that's what he's going to do. He's that type of fighter. I think he knows what's on the line. Uh, to come and I think he also knows it's entertainment but at the same time you got to get the job done first first and foremost you mentioned Sonny Edwards he's he's not shy of a word or two on social media Robert Garcia is going back and forward with him as well you know Bam you know Robert I think that is the fight they'll go for they, they both have said there's no reason why it shouldn't happen these guys again Bam will take all comers we've seen Sonny he will take all comers I don't see anything to, to stop this fight um, you know, and uh, I think it's a great fight. I think it's a fight that the fans want to see. I mean, look, there's also Jesus Martinez, you know, or uh, Julio, Julio Cesar Martinez. Um, so there's di different guys out there, but I think the Sonny Edwards fight is, is pretty mouthwatering. You know, again, I'm not Eddie. I'm going to have to leave that uh, to, to Eddie to figure out um, who he wants to pair up. But I, I would love to see that fight. Absolutely. I think the fans want to see that fight. We've got a couple of sensational Uzbek talents on the card as well. I, I know you know Joel Diaz, who, who works with them, but I wanted to start with Murad John Akhmedaliev. These guys, you've been out to Uzbekistan, you've, you've seen what it's like, where they've come from to get where they are now. Can you explain how these people are when they go home now? They're, they're like rock stars in their country, right? Well, they are rock stars. Yeah, they really are. Um, you know, Uzbekistan has put so much into their, uh, their boxing program, uh, and we've seen it... Uh, Produce dividends with um, uh, Hassan Boy Dusmatov, with uh, Jalalov, with um, Beck the Bully, you know, with Shakram Giasov, with Israel Majumov, who uh, will be on the card, and of course with MJ. You know, uh, Murajan, you know, Akhmadaliev is is an incredible fighter, and and he's a really lovely guy too. Um, he's unified champ, and I think they're looking for big things from from MJ. I think that, um, you know. I think Tapales is a is a is a is a tough operator, um, but I think his team MJ's team really believes in his skills, his footwork, and at the end of the day, it's just going to be you know levels to the game. So we'll have to see how it plays out. That's that's why we watch, right? It's going to be very interesting. But um, they're great guys. I mean, I did MJ's very first pro fight. Um, it was at the King's Theater in Brooklyn many years ago, and. Um, Shakram Giyasov also, so the, the two of them were kind of together, you know, the Wonder Boy, Shakram, 
Um, and just seeing those guys grow kind of before our eyes and, and what MJ's done, it's just great. Um, but he really, again, young fighter, but kind of just really, he understands, they're very dedicated to the game, you know, and with uh, Diaz brothers out in Indio training, and they're very, very dedicated. And, you know, you go back to Uzbekistan, and these guys have a massive, massive following. I hope we get back out there soon. It was a lot of fun. He's got that mandatory fight, like you mentioned, Topales. No, no gimme this weekend, but all the focus kind of after that will be on that undisputed fight. We're waiting to see Fulton anyway. But everything I've heard and every indication from Eddie, from Madliev, his team is, it should be quite easy to make. But whether Fulton or Inoue, hell of a fight. Oh, absolutely. And look, this is like kind of the trend in boxing is unifications and, and trying to get undisputed champions. And I think... MJ wants that kind of thing. He's that type of fighter. He's not scared of anybody. Um, you know, you could see him at the stare down yesterday. I mean, he's just ready for war. So I think whether it's it's Inouye, whether it's Fulton, that's a you know that's that's a great fight. Um, it's a great division, man. It's a really great division. So I'm excited to see what happens. But again, he's got to get through uh, his opponent. You know, tonight. Ray Ford got himself a hell of a fight against Jesse Magdaleno. Um, been match tough. But it's, he was saying at the press conference, this is the kind of fight I want, but perfect acid test to see if he's ready for the fight he's calling for, the world title fights. When I saw this fight on the card quite a while ago, I was like, oh, oh, look at this fight. I was really excited for it. Um, maybe, possibly, I mean, I'd say this, but there's some really good fights on the card. This, this might be my favorite fight on the card tonight. I really like it. You know, again, Raymond Ford... He's a guy that was very highly t touted uh, prospect. And then, you know, he kind of seemed to slow down a bit. But then something happened where it seems like someone lit a candle under his behind. And he's really, he's been having some great performances. He's, he's, he seems to have gotten more power. He's just sharper. He seems really focused. You know, he seems like he's operating on another level. And this is exactly the fight, like you said. You know, obviously, Jesse Magdaleno, this is, this is a tough fight. Former world champ. And, um... He's coming to win, and he does not want to lose to Ford. Uh, this is a great fight. I, definitely a crossroads fight, very exciting fight. Um, you know, these guys at different part, paths in their career, but it's equally important for both guys. This is what makes a great fight, different styles, and it's just a, it's a lovely fight. Uh, I think this should be a, a really, really fun fight tonight. He's been begging for the Lara Wood 2 winner. We know that that fight is now official. Just to touch on that fight quickly, First fight was so much fun. Expecting a, a kind of similar kind of pattern to the second fight? When you say that, do you mean with the crowd or with the actual fight? The fight. I think so because I think these guys are who they are. I don't think we're going to get too much difference. I think the main difference, what we're going to see, at least from Lee Wood, is that he's going to be completely switched on. Um, and I think that they had a good plan going in him and Ben. Davison had a good plan going in, but I think Lee got a little complacent in the fight and he started to mix it up. And you know, we know who Lara is. Like, Lara's not going to change his style. And we knew Lara was going to come and fight all 12 rounds, which is what he did. And a lot of people had him behind on those cards. But again, it's boxing, right? You can, you can hit that, that home run shot in the bottom of the ninth. Um, it wasn't the bottom of the ninth, it was maybe the middle innings, but, but he hit the home run shot. Uh, and, he, and he stopped the fight. Um, so I think that Lee Wood will probably box the same and be confident, but I think he's going to try to stay switched on. And I think, you know, it's funny. Um, you remember the fight that happened with Jordan Gill when he got stopped. Yeah. And the same opponent, Joe Cordina, fought in Monaco. And that was some years ago. And this was when we were watching Cordina on his rise. And I was always a fan of Cordina, but, you know, you're not really sure until you see these performances. The way Joe Cordina, his focus was so, and I'm, now I'm kind of switching, but I'm gonna, I want to tie it together. The way Cordina's focus was during that fight, he fought the whole 12 rounds, just completely switched on. And I said, that kid's going to be a world champ. The way he fought, that performance, it showed me like he has the mental fortitude and the focus to do what it takes to win these kind of fights against tough opponents. Um, and I think that that's what Lee Wood needs to do, that, that type of focus. He can have the same type of performance because he. I thought a lot of people thought he was winning that fight. But again, you can't lose focus. Um, 
And kind of the same thing, maybe a little bit with Zelfa Barrett when he fought Rakimov, right? A lot of people thought he was winning that fight and then, you know, before he got stopped. But the focus, I think, is very, very important. And I bring that that both up because of the Lee Wood fight and because we have Cordina fighting Rakimov coming up. And and I think that that's really a, an important, a very important uh, skill set in, in these fights. That's what I was going to come on to. I think we were saying your next fight after this will be Cordina Rakimov, yeah. but... You mentioned the focus. Is that just the important thing for Joe Cordina here, being switched on for the full 12 rounds and, and trusting in his skill set? Well, I think there's a couple things. The other, the other X factor is it's at coming back from an injury. So we don't know how it's going to affect him. So, uh, you know, mental, you know, the, the, the mental aspect of these fights are very, very important. So, you know, will he be afraid to throw a certain punch or to do certain things or will it hurt him? Um, or will he be stronger? You know, we just don't know. We don't know how it'll affect him. I certainly don't know. Uh, I'm not in his camp and, and I'm not training with him, so I have no idea how it will affect him. Um, but that's, I think, an X factor possibly uh, in the fight. Um, before fights, usually guys always say, oh, no, I'm 100% and this and that. But then afterwards, we find out that, you know, look, they're athletes. And a lot of times these guys always go and hurt. I mean, that happens with all kinds of sports, whether it's, uh, you know, soccer players, football, you know, basketball players, boxers. It could be tennis. It could be anything. Athletes have a lot of injuries. Um, and so there's always some pre-existing kind of condition going in. Um, it's how you deal with it and, and how it affects you. So we'll see. But, yeah, I do think the focus is the main thing. I think Rakamov is a very good fighter. Um, but I think Cordina has shown uh, his level, and if he can stay focused, uh, it's it's going to be a very tough fight for Rakamov, in my opinion. That same night, Ryan Garcia and Javonta Davis, an absolute monster fight. We've had many fights, big fights fall through, public negotiations for different fights. Is this a fight that the sport probably needed? I mean, need is a funny word. I'm always, I, I hate the word need, but yeah, this is the, the type of fight that the sport does need. Mm. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, fans, like, you can't, you can fool people with a lot of things. You can't fool people that they're being entertained. If people watch a fight and they're not entertained, you, you can't fool them and say, wow, that was entertaining. They know what they're watching. People know. The fans know. And they want to see these type of fights. I'm a fan. I want to see these fights, Ryan. You know, I, I really do. So, um, yeah, I think the sport does need that. Uh, we see the best fighting the best or equal levels fighting or not fighting but competing in all the other sports it needs to happen in boxing also it is happening more and more which is good but that trend needs to continue yeah it's a monster fight can't wait to watch it great it'll be a different time zone so you know get to do the Cordina fight and I get to watch the uh, the Garcia tank fight it's gonna be great both explosive fighters do you see any way this isn't an absolute barnstormer well it, it, just because it's a great fight as far as skill-wise and name-wise, which it is, both for sure, doesn't mean it's going to be exciting inside the ropes. You know, that's one of those things. I always say boxing, it's, it's like that Forrest Gump line, you know, life is like a box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, boxing is like that. You can put two guys together that you think is going to make a great fight. You know, and they always say styles make fights, which is true, but but you never know till you bite into it. We never know till these guys actually get in there and start dancing. You know, we've seen some fights that, that kind of turned out, uh, you know, somewhat boring. We thought it was going to be a, a really great fight. You know, it, it's interesting. If, if Garcia decides to box and really try to stay away from Tank, it could be a tough fight for Tank. And it might actually be kind of a tough watch. You know, I mean, unless you're a boxing purist, um, it, it might kind of be a tough watch. If, if he decides to engage, then it's going to be fireworks either way. Um, but I, I just think that these guys are going to make a good fight. I just, it's going to be one of those nights, I believe, where the world will be watching. These guys know it. This is the, the, it will be the largest fight for both of them of their careers at the time. And it's going to bring out the best for these guys. I, I do believe that. I think it's a, an absolute monster fight. Just to pick this back up after a little memory card change. Um, Anthony Joshua, you were there for the Jermaine Franklin fight. As always with Anthony Joshua, scrutinized for, for every move, every punch. Got the unanimous decision win. People were craving the stoppage perhaps, but what did you make of his performance? Well, listen, you know, he got the win, and that's great. Um, it's his first fight with Derek James. Um, I think, like you said, everything he does is so scrutinized and over-scrutinized and it's really tough for these fighters because they just don't have that many outings. You know, if he had another fight next week and a week after and a week after, you know, it, I, I said this before, like in New York, if the Knicks win a game, 
the front page of the paper is, is that how they're going to win the championship. Yeah. It's it's the it's a dynasty coming, best team that's ever been put together. And if they lose, it, it's these guys are bums. They're the worst ever. They're terrible. And we see this a lot in sports, in in places that really like sports. New York is one of those places. The lights are very bright. And in the UK, they love boxing and they love heavyweight boxing. And AJ is is a very big name. Like it or not, whether Tyson Fury has one of the belts or not. AJ is still a massive name in the sport and everyone watches him. So whatever he does is going to be scrutinized. I feel like, look, you know, the heavyweights typically can have longer careers. AJ did not have a massive amateur background. We've been seeing him grow up before our eyes. He's an Olympic gold medalist. He's a two-time world champ. He's with a new trainer now. And I think, I think the biggest thing for for Anthony Joshua is he really needs a why. He needs a why. You know, it seems that I don't know what his bank account says, but it seems like he wouldn't need money. So he's probably financially secure. That's what it seems like. Again, he's got the accolades of the Olympic gold. He's already a two-time world champ. What is your reason for fighting? If he has a real burning desire inside, then I believe the, the sky is the limit for him still because I think he can grow. And I think he, I think he's, he's getting better. And yes, people are saying he's more tentative with his punches and this, and that, and the other. But again, we don't get to see this many outings. And um, I just think he's got a lot more to go if he wants. It's it's really up to him. You know, it, it really is. And again, it's to take it back to like the last question, talking about Tank and Garcia and what's going to happen. To me, it's really up to those guys. I think either guy could win that fight, depending on their game plan and their execution of it. And like we talked about even in an earlier topic, the focus. So I think all those things are really, really important. And those are the only X factors that the fighters can answer. I can't answer that, neither can you, and neither can any of these pundits or the fans, because we, we don't know. And sometimes I don't think the fighters know until that night. You know, Sometimes you wake up uh, certain days and you just feel like you just own the world and you have a great outing. Sometimes you wake up, you feel under the weather, and you might have a bad outing. So I think there, there are different variables that can be very difficult, and that's one of the things with boxing with not so many outings. But I just think we gotta give Anthony some more time with Derek James. I think he will grow if he wants, and I think he can go on to do really big things. I, I really believe that, but he has to want it. It's up to him. You said that we need to give him more time with Derek James. Anthony came out the day after the fight and said, I want to be back out in 12 weeks. I think that's the best thing he could do, not take that big of a gap, straight back in the gym, keep on learning. Yeah, I think being active is great. Again, I'm not his trainer, I'm not his promoter, so it, it's going to kind of depend on how he feels. He might have gotten an injury in that fight. We don't know. You know, um, sometimes, uh, you know, boxing's the one sport, you know, look, we see it in, in, in different sports all the time. In basketball, we've seen the slow-mo of a guy passing a guy, he kind of almost doesn't even touch him and the guy falls to the ground. Ah! You know, we see it in, in football, soccer, whatever you guys call it, you know, all the time where, you know, a guy just lightly clips a guy and he's, ah, he's getting taken off in a stretcher and the next play he's back. Boxing's a sport where you get punched super hard and you, how much, you see guys say, no, that didn't hurt me. It's the only sport where guys are like, that didn't hurt, you know? Um, so I think, we don't know what's going on with the fighter. Maybe someone, you know, maybe there was an injury somewhere and, and possibly they say there wasn't. There could be all kinds of things, but either way, I believe that it is great if he's not injured and he feels good to come back out and to be, to kind of get that ball rolling. You know, ball motion stays in motion. You know, how many times have you had it, Ryan, where you're out running around all day, you feel great, you stop in your house real quick and you say, well, let me just sit down for a second. Then all of a sudden you're Oh, you know, and now you're getting tired, you're yawning, you want to take a nap. That happens sometimes. But when you're out and you're running around, you know, a ball in motion stays in motion. I believe the same for fighters. I think they should be active. Um, and I think that is the best thing. Absolutely. You mentioned Anthony Joshua perhaps needing the why or that the why will help. A fight that's being touted next is a Dillian White rematch. That seems to be a why, doesn't it? A, an incentive for him, an old rival first fight was a good fight. Do you think that's the perfect next step? Uh, again, I'm not a matchmaker. I, I don't know who they're all looking at. I know I, I've also heard Dillian White. You know, we've, we've all heard that. Um, I don't I don't know. But um, I think it's a nice fight. Uh, definitely a fight I'd like to see again. I know Dillian wants it. It seems like AJ wants it. Um, and, and again, the why is not just a part of it. I think the why has got to really be the main thing. 
because everything is builds off that foundation. You know, the, the why has to be very strong because if that's there, then everything will come. If it's not there, everything's going to be kind of a, it's going to be very tenuous. You know, it's going to be like kind of a house of cards that could fall over once the, once the, the water gets deep. You know, once you get into a dark place, then all of a sudden you're like, you know, I, this is not where I want to be. This is not what I want to do. If you have that why, it's like, I am going through that wall. Like, that, it's just not even, there's not even a question. And if you have that, that's the drive. And there's no other way but this way, through that opponent. And, and that, to me, that's everything. You must have that. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. Final one before I let you go. Uh, Canelo Ryder, we're a month out now. I know we had John Ryder on the channel yesterday. He was asked about, what do you say to those that are criticizing Canelo for fighting you? And his words were, F them all. A man who <laughs> has paid his dues to the sport, a big ask, but probably few fighters more deserving of, of what he's got in front of him. Oh man, I love the gorilla. That's great that he said that. I didn't see that interview, but uh, look, I'm really happy for John for this fight. And I think it's gonna be a really exciting fight, to be honest. And I think, it's very interesting because Canelo obviously is just one of the like great talents uh, of our sport of our generation without a doubt. But Canelo, we've seen different Canelos and we're seeing now different Canelos and you know it's dangerous when a guy falls in love with his power. It's dangerous when a guy thinks he could just run through someone, especially someone like John Ryder because he is a rugged dude. And I think that's the type of fight that John would like. And I think that plays into his, uh, you know, kind of plays into, into what he wants. I mean, if you look at an earlier Canelo, like the, the first fight with Triple G, you know, more of a boxer, and then Triple G kind of goaded him into saying, you know, you ran the whole time. And then fight two, Canelo just took it to him, and he's kind of never stopped that. Like, he, he really, you know, he's had a lot of su success with that until he hasn't with Bevel, you know, a bigger guy that could take his punches, great counter puncher, very slick boxer, and um, he just didn't seem to be too phased by that. And that was a problem for Canelo. Um, so what, you know, I mean, if you even if you look at the BJ Saunders fight, for example, a lot of people thought BJ was winning that fight till he got stopped, right? So again, Canelo relying on that power to stop him. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how Canelo t takes his fight you know how he how he performs in this fight and what his game plan is but it, it's going to be a magical night i mean guadalajara is a city we've done a lot of fights in it, it's a great city it's obviously canelo's hometown it's a homecoming he hasn't fought there in a long time i think it's fifty-six thousand people is what i heard is going to be in attendance i mean it's going to be magical and Ryder is a tough opponent man we, we've seen him time and time again he comes to fight so good on him and i cannot wait to see this fight Exciting fight. Right, David, we'll wrap it up there. Big fight night ahead, but thank you as always for speaking to ID Boxing. Ryan, thank you so much.